Okay, so today I wasn't really sure what to do next, so I decided I would do another integral, and we'll do one from the MIT integration, B2011. This was problem 11. We have the integral of cosine ln x dx. Okay, clearly we have a little bit of a problem with this ln x, so I'm gonna do right off the bat is do a u substitution for that. I don't think we have to do it this way, but I like doing it this way. So we're gonna say u equals ln x, and then just noticing we can rearrange it and solve for x as natural log as a base e, so we can write this as x equals e to the u. And taking the derivative, we're gonna find dx equals derivative e to the u is just gonna be e to the u du. Okay, then let's make our substitution. So we still have our cosine here. Natural log x is gonna be u. So we have cosine u and then our dx is this thing. So we have e u du. You know, with two functions like this, kind of a classic case where we wanna use integration by parts. I think it's gonna work out nice. I'm gonna do this using the di method or tabular integration. I think we're gonna have, you notice that when you differentiate or integrate these, they kind of, they persist. They're not gonna go away. We're gonna to need to apply integration by parts multiple times. So that's why I think di method is gonna be pretty effective here. Okay, so we have two columns, one to differentiate, one to integrate. And this is a case where it really doesn't matter what you choose, right? It's gonna work fine either way because both are easy to differentiate or integrate. So I just kind of prefer to integrate e to the u, but you could do it the opposite way very easily. Then we'll differentiate over here and we'll get derivative of cosine u is gonna be minus sine u. And then taking another derivative here, this is gonna be minus cosine u. Then the integral of e to the u, this is really simple because it's always e to the u, so we can just do that real quick. And then you might be wondering, well, why did I stop on this row? Why didn't I just keep going? We could have done five or 10 of these. The thing you wanna notice here is every row is an integral, and then if we just look at this row right here, we're basically back to our original integral just with a minus sign on it. So generally when the integral repeats, that's a good place to stop and then just kind of try to solve for our final solution. So let's put this all together. So what I'm gonna do, part of our solution is gonna be on these diagonals. Okay, so let's write this out. We're gonna have, now because I have e to the u in both terms, I'm just gonna kind of factor out that e to the u. So we'll have e to the u cosine u. Here a minus times a minus is a plus. So we're gonna have plus sine u. Again, I pulled the e to the u out. And then here we're gonna have minus, and instead of writing this integral, I'm just gonna call it i. Okay, this will be the same integral as this, i. And I do that because we wanna solve for that i. So what we can do is we'll just add an i on both sides. Okay, we'll add it here and here. And so what we're gonna end up with is a little equation. We'll have two i, two copies of the integral, is equal to e to the u cosine u sine u. But then to solve this, it's real easy. We just divide by two. Okay, that'll cancel. Now we're close. And all we need to do is we just need to back substitute. We have our u value and let's just bring it back in here. So rewriting our final solution, e to the ln x is the same thing as x, or we have this e to the u value right here. So up front, we're gonna have an x. Then in the parentheses, we're gonna have cosine, our u, which is ln x, plus sine ln x, all over two, plus c. And that's it. Pretty fun example of integration by parts. I like that one. So we'll stop it there. Thank you everyone for watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day.